Hello friends, welcome to the video. In this video, we are going to learn to remove background from images using deep learning technique. The first question here is, how are we going to solve this problem? So here is a pic of me. Our task is simple. We need to remove the background, the foreground from this image. Or we can say there are two components inside this image. So these two components are the background and the foreground. So foreground basically represents the photo of me. Okay. So we need to separate out these two components. To solve this task, we are going to use the image segmentation. So image segmentation is basically a task of labeling each pixel of an image with a specific class. And here I have already told you there are two classes. First is the background represented with the pixel value 0. And foreground that is pic or the human inside the image with the pixel value 1. And to solve this task, I have already trained a deep lab version 3 plus model on human image segmentation data set. And I have the trained file here. That is this model.h5 file. We can't open it directly. So we're going to use this trained model. So if you want to learn more about how I've trained this model, there's another video. You can check the uh, description or you can click I, I button for that video. So now we're going to begin with the implementation of this program. And we're going to do everything step by step and I'm going to explain you everything. So before that, I want to make sure that you subscribe the channel. If you are enjoying till this, till here, you mean you're enjoying the video and you'll, I hope that you like the content. So please subscribe the channel. Now we're going to uh, move to the co coding part. Okay. So before that, I'm going to explain something before. So these are some of the, uh, the, what do we call the matrix or the function which we have used during which we have used while training the deep level version 3 plus so while loading we require these three functions so that's why i've already written them here in this file so first is basically this intersection over union second is di dice co coefficient and third the dice co coefficient loss and this is going to be our main file that is run.py where we are going to write all the code so we begin by importing all the required libraries so first is the OS library and the line number two, we have set this environment variable so that we don't get unknown and unwanted error message from the TensorFlow. TensorFlow shows you a whole lot of line of unwanted message. We don't want to see them. And next is the NumPy. Basically, it is used for the numerical computation. Okay. Then we have CV2 pandas. I don't think we require pandas here. Okay. We can remove it for now. Next we have globe. So globe we are going to use to extract all the input images uh, from this folder image. So here we have only one image. We can put more images and see how it how that how it perform. Next is the TQDM. TQDM is basically progress bar. Okay. It shows how much um, progress is done. Like when you run a loop. So you have to wait. You can't see anything. So it basically shows you progress bar. And the last is our library to tensor flow and various things from it okay and then we have our metric file and from that we have imported all three functions that is dice loss dice coefficient and intersection over union so next we're going to define some global parameters that is the height and the width you already know we have trained a model and that model is trained with the specific height and width and that height and width is 512 by 512 so our next task and we're going to create a function called create dir Okay, so this function would help us to create a directory that is a blank directory and within this blank directory we are going to save our image that is the image where we have removed the background and added a custom uh, color. That custom color can be white, blue, anything. Okay, it's up to you. So now we begin with the main function. So first of all we are going to see the environment. Okay. So let me just uh, paste the code here. Okay. So first of all, we begin by seeding the environment to make sure that things are reproducible. Okay. Next, we're going to uh, use our create underscore dir function to create a directory. Okay. So we're going to use this remove underscore bg folder to save all the rec all the files which we going to need to see visually. Now the next step, we're going to load the train weight file. Okay. So here we are using the deep lab version 3 plus. So I can write here this is a deep lab version 3 plus. Okay. So I'll give you the 
uh, the link for the code okay for this entire process of training the deep live version 3 plus and that data set also don't worry about that now we can load all our images for now we have only one image okay so these are all our images okay before that let me show you the summary of the model that we can see okay now this summary will sh show you the entire model structure okay so you can see this is the entire model and it, these are the number of total number of parameter and let's go to the up and see the input okay so input here is an image of size 512 by 512 and the number of channel are three and it goes through various uh, layers convolution upsampling and various other kind of layer and ultimately get us give us a binary mask okay so the size of um, the output is same that is of the image that is 512 by 512 by 1 one here refers to the number of classes as we have only one main class that is uh, the, the the person inside the image so output in case of a binary segmentation mask is only one class and we apply is sigmoid function as the the task of sigmoid function it convert any value between a range of 0 and 1 and here we're going to use a threshold value let's say 0.5 so if anything greater than 0.5 would be 1 otherwise it would be zero okay, that's how we convert that uh, probability into specific classes that is whether it's a background or a foreground okay now this is all about the model and here we have loaded all the images so i'm going to show you what data x look like so it would be a list we're gonna uh, comment out this next we're gonna run it again so you can see we have one path that is images less picture dot jpg okay so we have loaded this image now we're going to write the code okay so first of all we're going to work with a for loop so we're going to loop over this list okay and here we have used this tqdm this progress bar so our first step is to extract the name okay because we are working with images and we need to save uh, the final image that is the image where we have removed the background so we need a name okay so what do we do we're going to extract the name from this image well let me just print the path for you here so that you know what it look like i know that you already know how it would look it basically looks the same as this list so you can see this is the progress bar and this is the name of the image so we need to extract out this name picture okay so we, what we're going to do we're going to use a variable called name and we're going to use split to be a path dot split so we're going to split it on the base of slash now this functionality would be different for a uh, windows user because i am using an a linux system if i show you i'm using ubuntu 20.0.0.4 ldis i hope you get it okay uh, like there need to be some changes to for this to work in windows because windows uses different slash like a different from this okay so you need to check that out and correct thing accordingly like my one question always is the i don't know why guys use windows for like programming i feel linux is much better because it uses less hardware you know i've used seen my configuration it's a little high but from my point of view what i feel uh, when i'm using the ubuntu like from last five to six here i feel that ubuntu is much be better for programming like it give you more control more you get a more feel more good feel it's never first thing is you know don't need any virus okay let's not go into the the discussion between ubuntu and windows let's continue with the program so we need to split this path we're going to use this slash now i'm going to print the name here and we are going to see how does it look like so you can see it has split it this into two separate thing that is images and picture.jpg so we need this last item from the list so we're going to say minus one so now our output would be picture.jpg so we need to extract this picture from here so what we're going to do we're going to again split it on the base of this dot okay now again we're going to have a list 
let's see that list and that list contain two words that is picture and the jpg so now we need the first word from here that is zero so now the name would contain the exact name of the image okay so this is the name of the image so first thing is done i hope you understand it how it it, it work now next we need to read the uh, image so we're going to say image equals to cv2 i am read and inside it we're going to give the path of the image and we're going to read image as an rgb so rgb refer to red green and blue that is three ch channels inside the image okay so we have read the image as an rgb now let's find its height and width because later we're going to need these dimensions that's why i'm saving them here so make sure that small h and small w refer to the height and width of image and capital h and capital w refer to the the global parameter that is height and width uh, in which the image need to be resized so we're going to say x equals to cv2 dot resize and we're going to say image image basically a numpy array we have already seen we have imported numpy array here and now this image is a numpy array okay when uh, this function takes the path and this uh, variable okay so it returns a numpy array now we need to resize it width by height okay now i'm going to show you something so we're going to check the dimension of this numpy array image and then we're going to see the dimension of this x that is resized resized numpy array technically we can say it in numpy array not an image okay so you can see this is the height and width of the original image then we resized it okay now this is done we have resized it now we're going to normalize it by dividing its pixel with 255 that is maximum pixel value so now the range of pixel value is between 0 and 1 next we're going to convert it to float 32 and then we're going to add expanded di dimension along the first axis okay so this would be done now yeah now I'm, again i'm going to show you the dimension of the x okay let's run it and see how does it look so you can see we have added one here okay because uh, this is a single image and we give more if we give an image or a numpy array in, into a model in the form of batches so we when we have one image so we're going to create a batch of one image so it's basically a batch of one image with the size of 512 by 512 okay now we're going to make a prediction okay let me make this p capital so we're going to say y equals to that is this y okay let me just remove this uh, from one say i'm again i'm going to give you the shape because we have given one image as an input so output would also be a one mask it would not be two mask because the model only pre predict one mask okay we need to remove this print statement from here okay after let's run it again so that you don't confuse the size let's take it takes some time okay now you can see the best size is one that is because you have one image and height and width are 512 by 512 and it's a one class it has one channel okay because it's a binary mask so now we're gonna say zero we're gonna index at the position zero now the shape would become 512 by 512 by 1 okay now this is the mask now what we gonna do we're gonna resize this 512 by 500 to original image okay we make sure that the uh, size of the prediction mask is same as the original image so that we can match the things properly so what we're gonna say y is equals to cv2 dot resize i'm gonna say y and now you remember we have saved these two dimension the height and width here so we're going to say white uh, not white the width by height so now we have resized the mask to original with the same dimension as the original image so let's may print its dimension again and see how it look
Okay, you can see it's its dimension is same as the original image. Now we're going to expand its uh, dimension on the last axis. So we're going to say np dot expand dims. Then the variable is y, and we're going to say axis minus one. Now see how the shape changes when we add a dimension on the last axis. Okay, so you can see we have added this last dimension to the axis. Okay. Now we're going to remove this statement from here. So now we have our mask uh, in the proper shape, proper dimension. Now let's, uh, we're going to save it for once and see how it looks. So you know the name of the directory that is remove underscore bg. So this is the name of the directory then the name this variable name then dot and an extension and after that the array y so now the y contain value between 0 and 1 so in order to see it okay so the a range of uh, image pixels are between 0 and 255 and here the range is 0 and 1 so we need to multiply it by 255 so that range became from 0 to 255 so till now the mm, the pixel value is, is is between 0 and 1 it's not 0 or 1 it's 0 and 1 between 0 and 1 okay don't confuse because we haven't uh, or we haven't used any threshold here okay the pixel value are between 0 and 1 again i'm telling you it's between 0 and 1 not 0 or 1 so now we're going to save it and see how it look how the mask look so we have uh, our image also with us and we also have our mask with us okay let's go back to the program so here's the image and this is the mask so you can see, you can see that uh, we now have the mask for the for person inside the image okay so our first task is done we have separated the image the human figure from the image now what we're gonna do we're gonna provide a threshold here of 0.5 so now what happens is the pixels change became 0 or 1 now again we're going to run it this time we're going to see a much clean mask okay at the edges so it would help us to eliminate something from the border okay now you can see this is much clean mask now what we're going to do we're going to have we're going to comment it out and we're gonna say let's say uh, what do we have so we need two kind of mask first is a photo mask that is the main object that is why and next we're gonna need a background mask so what we're gonna do we're gonna say nb dot abs see what i'm gonna do i'm gonna subtract one minus y okay so we can comment out like this same. so this is and we're gonna copy it from here so this time we're gonna see we're gonna see the background mask okay okay so you can see now the background is in white color and the main object is in black color so we have reversed the classes reverse the pixels so now photo mask contain the mask for the main object the background mask contain the mask for the background okay so now we have separated out both the elements now see what i'm going to show you one more time here is that okay now we can see the individual thing from that okay let me just directly copy it from here okay so what we can do we can take the original image and multiply it with photo mask okay 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 now let's uh, run this program and okay now it is done let's see you can see the main object is there the background is removed one step of the program like we are near the near finishing the pro program okay we have separated out the main object we have removed the background okay 
so this is the effect of using this photo mask now again i'm going to comment this out and we're going to make one more change this time we're going to use the background mask now if you're uh, like if you are confused why haven't we used 255 here so we have applied 255 just to make sure that we can easily see them okay because you can't see the difference between an image pixel of 0 and 1 but you can see the difference between 0 and 255 so here what we are doing because the background mask or photo mask have pixels or the array contain values between 0 and 1 no not between contains 0 or 1 so pixel value multiplied by 0 became black and rest remains the same because they are multiplied by 1. The same thing is going to happen when you multiply image and the background mask. We are going to run this program and see what uh, do we get now. So this time we would get, uh, get the background as the main class. You can see we have extracted the background from here. So this looks really nice like we have removed the main object from here and we have just the background. Like we can also make some program here. We can use some auto encoder to complete out this this blank area. Maybe the deep because deep learning has the capability to figure out things. Okay, it can predict. It can take the surrounding pixels and predict that pixel it can fill. So maybe we can do this task in any other video. But for now, we have separated out both the elements. Okay. Now this is a fantastic thing we have done till now. So if you have, if you're enjoying the video and like you're getting good knowledge from the still now so i uh, make sure that you subscribe the channel and like this video okay now the next task here is to add a custom background okay maybe you want a white background you want a you want a red background so let's implement that okay so first of all we would extract out the object the main object from let's say masked photo you can say image multiply by photo mask okay so we have our main object here now remember that the image or the main photo is in the third is a three dimensional object so its shape let me just show you the shape of this and what i'm showing you why i'm showing the shape it also answer that question the white is necessary so you can say this is the height width and the number of channel are here and that this uh, this is this value is important if you want a custom color let's say you want blue okay so we need to make sure that the background mask which is blue in color would be also would also have the same number of channel because blue would represent using an rgb so let's do this background mask let's say okay and i can copy this code like this so what we have done we have stacked the these three layer on top of each other on the last axis okay so now what we're gonna do we're gonna say background i hope you understand this short function so it is basically like okay into 255 by 255 by 255 so these three value represent these three pixel value okay it's blue green and red so it's basically reverse of rgb red green and then blue so these all if i'm saying 255 255 255 this means it's going to be white color the final photo would be masked photo plus background and now we're going to save this So first is the name we can directly copy this from here yeah i can even copy the complete code from there for oh, this is the final photo now we're going to save it and see the final result of this whole program like the thing we want okay so we have this picture here now we can see the background is white we have completely removed the background from this original picture okay see how that picture has turned into this beautiful thing but still there are some limitation you can see here this area is not separated out it's also treated as the main area and the reason for this is that the model need to be trained much more okay now what you just need to do here you need to train this model and get and get a updated weight file a weight file which is really efficient in extracting out the human pixels from an image okay
but the main thing is same you just need to update your weight file load it here and everything else is going to be the same now what if you want a different background color let's say you want a blue so we're going to say zero in the green and zero in the red pixel value and we're going to run this program again so this time we would get a background blue like that's my prediction so you can see this time we have a blue background you can change it accordingly you can say red so here we can say 255 we can say zero in the blue pixel so this time we would get a red background okay this is done now you can see we have a red background so it's work it's work fine you can change the background color accordingly it's up to you what background color you want let's say we want a value 255 in the blue and 255 in the red so let's see what color do we get here we get a completely different color here okay let's see okay it's, it's some pinkish color i can you can say let's uh, now go with the red only so now this is on the photo which i which is of me let's now extract some photos from the internet so you can say okay some human images celebrity photos let's test it on random images from the google okay i'm just opening the first link here if it's going to be some copyright issue then i am okay let's uh, not do this way let's directly go to the google images i think that would be much easy okay let's uh, let's let's okay let's go with two people in an image can we do that save image yes, let's. i'm going to save it on the desktop because we are working on the desktop and images okay let's uh, visualize the image and see do we have that image downloaded okay so we have this image is downloaded yeah now we're gonna uh, predict for these two uh, people in single image let's see if that program work or not i hope it would work that's my pr prediction that it would work okay you can see it's it's working fine there are little issues here and there and that's i will tell you because of the training of the model the model is not trained up to mark okay let's uh, use one more image okay what else uh, what okay okay uh, do we have multiple people like like not this not this yeah can we do with this image like i knew this this would be a complete disaster but still we're gonna try it out it's a png image it's not an issue so let me close this and we have this okay we have this so now let's test only 16 people at once if it works or not so let's run this program for three images okay like that's why we use this tqdm or the progress bar so we can see how many images are done like for one to three images it's fine but for like 20 or 100 images okay you can see it's 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 working here but you can see because the model is not trained for m m multiple pe people like this so it's better use single image like this here even two pe two people would be fine but more than three like 16 people here at once it would not work that fine so this is the complete um, tutorial on how you're gonna remove background from an image using the deep learning so here we, we have used a trained deep lab version 3 model and we have separated out both the image and the mask that is the uh, the foreground the background from the image and then do a lot of stuff and finally we get our image and a background remove so i hope you enjoyed this video you learn a lot from this and to learn more about the deep learning and cement or the semantic seg segmentation related stuff do check out my other videos they are also nice I have done a lot of videos on like UNET, pre-trained UNET, medical image segmentation or if you need any kind of help in your project or any other thing just message me on my social media. So that's all for this video. Thank you. Have a nice day.